Recording from home is getting super common these days and it sounds really good as well. So today I wanted to talk about some benefits of recording at home as well as some benefits of recording with a producer in the studio and maybe how you could use a bit of both uh, to get a really good sounding recording. So let's talk about it. Hey, I'm Craig from the Dot of That Studio and we're talking about going from musician to artist and we're going to have a chat about recording because recording is something we need to be doing and the home recording has been taking off for a long time but now it, there's always kind of the question is should I just record at home on the cheap or should I go to the studio? What's the difference? Because we're a little bit scared of the price of a studio, studio recording but we're also a little bit, uh, is this home recording Good enough. So I wanted to chat about a few benefits of both and maybe give you a little bit of direction as a super biased uh, studio producer here who, th- who loves the studio, but I also worked for ages from home before I had this space and I've heard really great recordings from home. So I think there's, there's a spot for both of it and I want to chat about that with you today. I think the main tipping point where you should go from home to studio really depends on your goals. It really depends on your goals because your your goals are different to the next person's goals. So if you're if you just need to get your music out there, you just need to put some stuff out there, have some people listen to it, get a bit of response to it, and just kind of move it. Then maybe recording at home is perfectly fine for you. But maybe if you want to end up in playlists with the top 100 artists and you want to go, you want to make a real go of it. You want to sound pro. You want to appear pro then maybe recording from home is just going to be a big blockage for you. There's going to be a big uh, divide between the quality that you want in your head and the quality that you've got from your home recording. So I say that just to say, what's your goal with it? What is your goal with your music? Where do you want it to end up? Who do you want to be listening to it? And what do you want to achieve out of your music? And I think that will help you to decide whether home is going to be good enough or whether you should invest in the studio. I think the important thing to remember about recording is that it's quite a detailed process and it's kind of a deep, I call it like a deep black hole of of knowledge and techniques and experiences. And it's one of those things you don't know about until you start doing, then all of a sudden you realize what's involved with it. So uh, a good analogy is with a camera. So a couple of years ago, I bought a camera. And before that time, to me, taking a photo was taking a photo. So a more expensive camera might have, I don't know, a better, the, a better ability to take a photo. But why? I had no idea. It wasn't until I got this camera and I started taking photos and looking at other people's photos when, that I saw, man, there's, there's a lot to this. I did, had no idea aperture, focal length, all that stuff existed until I got into it. And I actually had to stop myself and go, you know what, I'm not going to get into photography. I don't have enough brain space to actually learn what's involved in taking a good photo. So the less I know, the better. So now if I want good photos taken, I'm going to pay somebody to do good photos for me because I don't want to get into that black hole. Now it's the same with audio. So we kind of think we can get into it and we can go and buy the software. We can buy a microphone. We can play around with a compressor in the software and we're good. We can we have the tools so we now can build the song. But it doesn't necessarily work like that. There's a lot of technique and there's a lot of experience. There's a lot of ins and outs of the music to kind of get there. So um, same, if we look at like a builder knows how to build a house. So they use the tool, the hammer, the whatever. I'm such a builder, as you can tell, to build a house. I can't just go and buy a hammer and then expect that I can build a house because I now have the tool. So recording gear is the tool, but recording music is the skill. Building the house and knowing how house design works is the skill. The hammer is just the tool. Same with the photo. So for example, I reckon if I bought a $10,000 camera and I went head to head against a photographer with a $300 camera, I reckon he would be taking better photos than me, even though I've got better gear. If he's got know-how, he's going to frame it. The colors are going to be better, even with a cheap camera. I think it's a little bit the same um, with music gear and with recording. It's not really about gear. It's about experience. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you from recording at home. I just want to say, know your tipping point. Know when you want your music to kind of go next level and know your limits in being able to do that. So like I said, if you just want to get some music out there, put it up on SoundCloud or something like that, or you're quite happy with your mixes, it doesn't need to be polished, it just needs to express yourself, then absolutely record from home. But if you want to go next level, I think understand that there is a kind of a lot to the recording process. 
that you can absolutely learn and you can devote yourself to learning that. But the engineer that you're paying has already learned that and will be able to bring that out. So I think that's kind of what it's really about. It's an experience thing rather than a knowledge thing and rather than a ge- absolutely rather than a gear thing. But there's that experience. I want to chat about um, what things can you do from home? What things should you do in the studio? And how can you kind of blend them together to save yourself a ton of money and still get a really, really good recording? So that's let's have a look at that. I reckon every music artist should be recording from home to a degree. They should be demoing and songwriting from home and getting the music out of out of theirness. Some sort of ability to be able to songwrite and record demos of your music. That way you can hear them back, um, figure out where things should go, kind of help your songwrite, and then also help your producers. So if you end up going to a studio, you can take that demo and say, this is what I'm thinking. This is the direction I'm going in. And then the producer can kind of see the full picture uh, from the start rather than having to kind of make up the picture in his head as you're laying down track by track to kind of get inside your head, if that makes sense. So I think demoing from home is really, really good. And that's something you don't need to necessarily pay a studio for to go in and do a demo. Now, if you know nothing about it and you couldn't be bothered getting into technology or whatever, then go and see a studio and they can do your demos as well. But if you wanted to do something from home, you should definitely be doing demos at home. Songwrite all your stuff, play it out and get it out of your head and take it to the studio as a demo. I think doing pro releases from home is really, really difficult because of a ton of reasons. One of them is that acoustics really makes a big difference. The second one is it's just, it's really an experience thing. So if you've done, if you've recorded five or six albums from home, they probably sound great and you probably don't need to go to a studio anymore because you would have unlocked that kind of experience. So even if you went on YouTube and found a ton of tutorials about recording and you got a bunch of knowledge, unless you experience that, it's going to be really, really difficult. I know even for me, I went to uni for a couple of years, got a degree in audio engineering, but really didn't learn anything about it until I recorded a bunch of bands for a bunch of years and figured out how to do it and figure out what works and what doesn't and what I like the sound of and all that sort of thing. It's really an experience-based thing. So if you're only recording yourself at home, either you need to be recording a lot of songs or you need to be doing it for a lot of years to kind of really gain that experience that's going to help you go pro. Now, everybody's thinking, but Billie Eilish does it from home. Billie Eilish and Phineas do all this stuff from home, and that's amazing. A couple of things. First, Phineas has been doing it for ages and produces for a lot of people. Second thing is that nobody tells you about, they didn't get it mixed at home. Phineas didn't mix that record. He wrote the record at home. He recorded the parts in, they kind of produced it at home, but they got that mixed in a pro studio by a professional mix engineer because Phineas is a producer. He's not a mix engineer. So... They record from home, but then they hybrid and get it finished off in the studio to get that professional sound. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about in a second. So what the studio brings is a couple of things, an acoustic environment, which makes a massive difference and an experienced engineer that's heard a lot of different sounds and can kind of figure them out. So one trap that we get caught into, and I I got caught into this a lot when I was recording from home, is that if you play your guitar in your room, you know what that sounds like. So you kind of shape it like that. You shape it how you want it to sound, but you don't have the context of what another guitar sounds like necessarily. So you don't have anything to kind of bounce it off. You're just assuming that what you can hear sounds good. So the benefit of an engineer is that he's mixed hundreds of guitars. So he knows straight away, this is what a guitar should sound like. These are the frequencies I need to bring out in your guitar to make it sound how you want it to sound. Rather than having that sort of one-sided view when you are recording yourself. The other thing is the acoustics of the room. Now this is a huge, huge thing and it makes such a difference. Like your room, I would take an expensive room and cheap gear any day of the week over expensive gear and a compromiser room any day of the week. And this is the main thing I noticed when I moved into this space here. It just sounds good straight away. So before I used to be fixing up problems in all of my audio, anything that I'd use a microphone for in my little bedroom studio, which was a proper, like all the walls were foamed and the whole thing, like it was a proper home studio, but I was fixing problems in all the audio and I didn't realize I was doing that until I got into this space and no longer did I have to fix the problem. So you know what this looks like when you're pulling out frequencies to fix muddiness or boominess or sizzle or whatever it is. 
you're not having to do that if you're in an acoustic space, which is really, really great. So the only way you can do that from home is if you've got a bad sounding room is to move the microphone really, really close to the source. So maybe if you're recording acoustic guitar, you got the microphone like that far away because that way you're not introducing too much room. The sound's coming straight out and it's hitting the microphone before the room can affect it. Now, while this does get away from the room sound, you've now got an unnatural sounding guitar because who listens to the guitar with their ear next to the sound hole? Nobody does. So we stick a microphone there and then the speaker reproduces that and we expect that that's gonna sound like a real guitar but it sounds really harsh and unnatural. So the other thing we can do is like I did is foam up all my walls. So foam everything so there's no reflections anywhere. And then you've just got a really dull sound that also doesn't sound natural because we're not used to listening to a guitar in a foam room. We're listen used to listening to a guitar on a stage in a room with it actually bouncing around the walls. So we can kind of make compromises to fix it a little bit at home. But an acoustically designed space just means that you can stick a microphone almost anywhere in that room and capture a natural representation of that instrument. And that means when you're mixing that you're not having to pull out frequencies, you can just sweeten it. So most of the EQ that I'm doing in the studio here is just sweetening. It's like, oh, let's add a bit of that there. Let's add a bit of this here. Maybe take out some sounds we don't want because another instrument is doing that, but we're not having to fix problems and take out huge chunks of audio so that our stuff sounds normal. So let me chat about a couple of hybrid methods, a couple of ways that you can use the home studio and the pro studio, save yourself a bunch of money and still get a really, really good sound. So the first thing is when I talked about the studio, I was talking about microphones in spaces, but what a lot of recording is, especially now is direct in. So if you're using keyboards or MIDI, you're going direct in and you're not using any space. So there's no advantage to you being in a studio audio wise if you have a decent interface and you're plugging things directly in so keyboards uh, midi all that sort of stuff you could record at home the other thing you can do at home is guitars so what i'll do most of the time here at the studio is is record a guitar direct in so they're just playing essentially just into a di and you're getting the sound of a di and maybe like a software amp simulation so they can hear or we're running the amp in the next room. Then I can reamp it when I get to the mix stage, which means I can adjust the tones depending on what the mix needs rather than what it sounded like um, when they were laying or layering it on solo. So for that, that's just recording a DI. So again, you direct in. So maybe if you've got a song that has like four, five guitar parts, something like that, you could spend all your time playing them. You could do your 50 solos to make sure you get the right solo. And you could spend three or four hours doing that at home. And then when you come into the studio, you could just run that wave file back through the amp with the microphone in the room and you could spend half an hour in the studio recording five hours worth of guitar recording that you've done at home, if that makes sense. So at this point, I'm still going with real amps. I think I haven't found an uh, instance yet where the software amp sounds better than my amp with a microphone on it. I think it's real close and in a couple of years, um, it will be, it'll probably be as good, if not better. I love the how you can muck around with it and change the sounds. And I'll do a lot of that when I'm um, kind of writing and recording. But the, that final mix at the moment, I still like an amp better. But if you took out the amp, then yeah, absolutely. You could just plug in DI and then just use software amps and you spend no time in the studio for that guitar part. So what I basically mean is you could then take those parts into the studio and have half your song recorded before you did anything. That way you could just do your acoustic guitars, your drums, your vocals in the studio off a bed that you've demoed at home, you've recorded the direct instruments at home and you've halved your studio time and without halving a loss of quality, without having a loss of quality, without halving the quality. What you could then do is use a studio for their nice sounding acoustic space and the engineer's knowledge in doing that. It's one thing to have a nice sounding space. It's another thing to know where to put the microphone to maximize that instrument and what microphone to use and all that sort of thing or yeah what microphone to use so the studio is going to have a bunch of different sounding or sorts of microphones plus the knowledge of where to put them so you've recorded all your direct stuff and then you can just do your acoustic microphone requiring stuff in the studio and you're at exactly the same place 
for half the cost. Another hybrid method you could do is maybe record all your instruments at home. Maybe you've got a decent setup and you can record everything from home and then just take it to the studio to get it mixed by the engineer that knows the techniques and the tricks to bring out the sound that you want using the instruments you've recorded at home. So this is the Billie Eilish method where you track it and produce it from home and you just get a mix engineer to fix it. So this is quite popular and a lot of uh, bands are sending their, their music overseas or whatever to get mixed by these big name mix engineers who no longer record anyone anymore. They just sit and mix these tracks, these stems that people are recording at home or recording in other studios and sending them because it just saves a heap of money. You don't need to hire that producer, that mix engineer for the whole process, just the end bit, just the bit that makes it that gives it that final polish and that final sound. So you could do that. Alternatively, maybe you don't have a good space at home, but you are pretty savvy with the mix. You know what you've got to do to get it to sound like you want to. You just don't have the space to do it. Maybe come into the studio, record everything in the studio, and then just get the stems, take them home, take your time mixing it and get to sound good at home. So again, you're halving the studio time, you're halving the cost. If you track in the studio, mix at home, or you track at home, and mix in the studio. So there's a bunch of hybrid methods to kind of do a bit of both and save yourself some money, but also get a really good sounding recording. So that's my little breakdown of recording at home versus recording at the studio. I'm not against recording at home. I love recording in the studio. That is my job. I love doing it. So I'm a little bit biased towards the studio, but hopefully that bias has helped you to see um, some of the pros and cons for recording at home versus in the studio, or you could take on that hybrid method and that would be really, really good. And that's about it from me. I'm doing short episodes every week here on YouTube. If you found value from that at all, give this a like for me and subscribe to the channel because i got weekly videos. It's also a podcast on your favorite podcast app. Make some music this week and we'll talk again soon.